Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle up, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is the story and situation around Billie Eilish, who, if you don't know, one of the biggest musical artists out there right now. She's a young artist known for a lot of things, including really never showing off her body, like taking baggy clothes to a whole different level. And so, in the past 24 hours, a story has blown up because Billie Eilish has shown more of her body. But also, uh, this isn't my show from 10 years ago where I'm like, hey, look at this body. There's also this this message and debate about the reveal and just the relationship in general people have with women's bodies. So last night was the first night of her world tour and during this there was an interlude where you see her take off her hoodie. But more notably, Billie Eilish shares a message over this video. A message that I'll read because the audio is pretty unusable for most angles because people are just screaming like they're being happily stabbed. But the message in part includes, some people hate what I wear, some people praise it, some people use it to shame others, some people use it to shame me, but I feel you watching always and nothing I do goes unseen. So while I feel your stares, your disapproval, or your sigh of relief, if I lived by them, I'd never be able to move. Would you like me to be smaller, weaker, softer, taller? Would you like me to be quiet? Do my shoulders provoke you? Does my chest? Am I my stomach? My hips? The body I was born with, is it not what you want? If I wear what is comfortable, I am not a woman. If I shed the layers, I am a slut. Though you've never seen my body, you still judge it and judge me for it. Why? Why make assumptions about people based on their size? We decide what they're worth. If I wear more, who decides what that makes me? What that means? Is my value based only on your perception? Or is your opinion of me not my responsibility? You know, seeing this moment, hearing the message, also looking back to past interviews where she talked about her body, I really respect this moment and message because ultimately, right, if you boil it all down, it's a message of this is my body, this is your body, we should be able to do whatever the hell we want with our bodies, think about what makes us happy. Because there will always be outside sources telling us what we are and what we're not. Or because no matter what, there are gonna be people that take the moments where she's wearing the really baggy stuff and go, ah, oh, that's not what a woman's supposed to look like. Or use pictures and videos of her wearing the baggy stuff to shame women who didn't. Right on the other side, you're gonna have people taking moments where Billie Eilish is now showing off more of her body. And you're gonna have other examples of people shaming her or using her to shame others. And at the core, the main message we need to repeat to ourselves over and over, because it's very easy to lose it, is as long as I'm not hurting anybody else, the choices I make in my life about me are perfectly fine as long as they make me happy. But yeah, that's the situation and those are my thoughts on it. And then let's talk about Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now Putin, if you don't know, has been the on and off again president of Russia since the year 2000. And the reason for the on again, off again is that Russia's constitution currently limits the president to two consecutive terms. So Putin was president from 2000 to 2008. He was then termed out, stepping down and taking over the role of prime minister. Then in 2012, he was elected to serve his second first term, which is a fun sentence. Very democratic and the guy who was serving for president during that time then essentially switched places with Putin taking over the role as prime minister. But before reverting back to that role of prime minister, there was a very helpful change for Putin where presidential terms were now six years, right? So Putin became president in 2012, then winning re-election in 2018. And so we're at the situation where his fourth term or his second second term is ending in 2024. So of course you have people going, well, what's gonna happen there? Is Putin gonna sit out that next round and then just run again in 2030, right? That's a downside to the new six year term. Plus the downside to that is in 2030, he would be 77 years old, although, <laughs> I mean, that's Biden-Bernie territory right now. Right, but for Putin, if not that, then what? It's Vladimir Putin. You know in some way he's gonna try and consolidate and hold on to power. And so actually the belief for a little while is that Vladimir Putin was gonna set it up while he was president to make himself more powerful when he had to leave office. Right, and this is something that appeared validated after Putin proposed a series of constitutional amendments back in January. Some of those amendments involving limiting the power of his successor to the presidency and expanding the power of other bodies outside of the presidency, right, in places that presumably he would take over. But now, as of today, we're seeing a series of new developments that appear that there is a different plan in motion. Now this is a plan that was not proposed by Putin, not in any way, not choreographed, nothing very organic. Right, so there's this idea, this proposal from a member of parliament who is very popular and famous for being the first woman to go to space. Right, so this MP, she says that Russia should either scrap term limits altogether or pass an amendment that would basically reset Putin's term limit clock so that he could run for a third consecutive time. Arguing, given his enormous authority, this would be a stabilizing factor for our society. That was reportedly met with a applause and followed by a call to Putin who then made a rare appearance in parliament to express his support for resetting his term limit, saying the president is a guarantor of security of our state, its internal stability and evolutionary development. We have had enough 
revolutions. And adding, I'm sure that together we will do many more great things, at least until 2024. Then we will see. I like to imagine that's how he said the last line. Who knows? Anything's possible. But notably, he did say he didn't want to scrap term limits altogether. And even more notably, he said that the constitution should keep the two term limit. With Putin reportedly saying he believes Russia must turn into a country that changes presidents regularly, just not now because it's not ready. Which I will say as a man who believes that rules are incredibly important, but also should not apply to me, I greatly respect. I mean, honestly, Putin's kind of killing it right now. And by it, I mean foreigners in other countries. Jesus. But I mean, really, the word president, I feel like it, it, it's just changing internationally. Like if this happens, which it's, it's greatly believed that it will, Putin will join other fantastic and definitely valid presidents like Erdogan of Turkey, President Xi of China. But as far as if this will happen, well, most likely no on April 22nd. You know, shortly after the theatrics we saw and talked about the lower house of parliament passed the law to let Putin run again by a huge margin, that law will go to Russia's constitutional court, which will then decide if it's legal. And right now, experts believe that they will find that it is. And from there, it will go to the Russian people who will vote on it as a referendum on April 22nd, along with other proposed constitutional reforms that will likely be approved by parliament and the court, including a ban on gay marriage. So uh, there's that. Also, it's important to note the timing of the situation. The fear of the unknown, the fear of chaos is high right now. I mean, for example, this proposal comes just one day after the value of Russia's ruble dropped to its lowest level in four years. And that's because Russia's cooperative agreement with OPEC, the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, it completely fell apart when Russia refused to agree to oil supply cuts, which the other members are arguing are necessary because oil demand is super low due to the coronavirus. But yeah, uh, just just some, uh, some fun stuff to know about, I guess. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love to Today in Today in Awesome, brought to you by Keep. Something you might not know, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time that they're 35, which is a stat that legitimately shocked me. But you know, we all have that one brother or that uncle, and hey, if that's not what you want for yourself, you don't have to just sit idly by. Keeps helps you stop hair loss before it's too late with their scientific and affordable approach. Their treatments are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss, and they say that prevention is key. And you also don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products that are out there. So some of you may have actually tried them before, but probably never at this price. Which actually on that note, for a limited time, you beautiful bastards can get your order for 50% off. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Franco, or just click that link in the description down below to receive 50% off your first order. And the first bit of awesome today is Call of Duty's new free Battle Royale Warzone drop today. And I've only been able to play it for like 40 minutes, you know, sneaking in two rounds, but so far it's genuinely fun. It's simple in the ways that I want, interesting in ways I didn't expect. But of course, like with most BR games, it's more of will this still be fun and interesting in two to four months. Then we got a trailer for Disney's Jungle Cruise, of course, with The Rock and Emily Blunt. We had Jax Films giving us the sanitizer watch. Then we got a trailer for Altered Carbon Resleeve. Binging with Babbage gave us Turf and Turf from Parks and Rec. We got a trailer for Tom Segura's new special. We have Bretman Rock's 10 minute morning face routine. And if you wanna see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, really anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about updates around the coronavirus because why talk about news on YouTube unless we actively try to get demonetized, fuck you YouTube. Way to de-incentivize people trying to put out factual, non-fear-mongering content because you crack down so hard trying to stop people from making fear-mongering conspiracy theorist videos. But uh, apparently they are reassessing the situation, so we'll see what comes from that. But main point, we're seeing the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services asking nursing homes to limit visitation due to the high amount of deaths and greater risk for people over 60 and or with underlying health conditions. Also urging seniors to limit unnecessary travel and large groups. We've seen some colleges like Stanford and Columbia University canceling in-person classes. Right, students will be working online instead. We're also seeing companies encouraging certain employees to try to work from home. We also saw Trump announcing that the White House will be working with industries like airlines, cruise ships, and hotels. These, of course, industries being hit incredibly hard because people are canceling travel plans. Although, in general, we've seen a lot of companies losing money. I mean, yesterday we saw the stock market nosedive with the Dow Jones losing 2,000 points, closing 7.8% lower. Which, if you're unfamiliar with the stock market, those numbers are massive. It was the worst day for the stock market since the 2008 financial crisis, and we actually even saw the stock market temporarily stop trading. Notably, that only lasted 15 minutes, but it was the first time since 1997. Though, I, I do want to note here, this is actually for a number of reasons. Saudi Arabia was slashing away at oil prices, this largely because of a price war with Russia. So you have that, and then you pair it with the big fear around the coronavirus that it could end up plunging the global economy into a recession. Also, on the note of government reaction, you know, like we talked about, Trump signed an $8.3 billion aid package focused on vaccine research and medical efforts last week. Also, yesterday we saw Trump make another announcement. We are going to be asking tomorrow, we're seeing the Senate, we're going to be meeting with uh, House Republicans, Mitch McConnell, everybody and discussing a possible payroll tax uh, cut or relief, substantial relief, very substantial relief. That's a big, that's a big number. 
Uh, we're also going to be talking about hourly wage earners getting uh, help so that they can uh, be in a position where they're not going to ever miss a paycheck. Right, so it sounds like there may be payroll tax cuts, but also th there really aren't any details yet. You know, and, and around this, you had people like Republican Senator Chuck Grassley saying that, quote, everything is on the table. But also you had Republicans like Senator John Cornyn, who said, usually love tax cuts, but I think it's a little bit premature. And actually, this afternoon, we saw Trump coming out of that meeting with Republicans. In a press conference, he called it great, saying that there was a tremendous unity. In that meeting, he reportedly proposed a temporary payroll tax that could cost the government $40 billion a month. But notably here, a decision was not actually reached. This because reportedly with some Republicans proposing different plans. Others worried the payroll tax cuts might not do enough to stimulate the economy. And reportedly on the other side of this, you have Democrats working on their own plan as well. And yesterday we saw Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer kind of lay out that plan, which appears to include free coronavirus testing, paid leave for those affected by the epidemic, expanded food subsidies, and expanding the federal unemployment insurance system. Right, so at the very least, on the note of paid leave, it appears that there might be some common ground between Republicans and Democrats. Though, I do want to stress here, right now we do not know the details of either plan. Right, so we might have the mutual end goal of better, but the, the how, uh, there still might be a difference of opinion. Also, another bit of coronavirus news that we saw came thanks to Fox News and Fox Business News. One of the more viral moments coming from Fox Business News host Trish Regan. The chorus of hate being leveled at the president is nearing a crescendo as Democrats blame him and only him for a virus that originated halfway around the world. This is yet another attempt to impeach the president and sadly, it seems they care very little for any of the destruction they are leaving in their wake. Losses in the stock market. All this, unfortunately, just part of the political casualties for them. You know, this is a time to be united, not to be pointing fingers, not to be encouraging hate. And yet, what do we see? We see the absolute opposite from the left tonight. All right, so going after Democrats and the left, saying that they're politicizing this moment, all while coronavirus impeachment scam is on screen. It also appeared that Donald Trump seemingly supported this, retweeting the video. A number of conservatives seemingly supporting the video, although you saw a number of people criticizing it as well. And among those arguments, saying that Reagan is deflecting and projecting for the president, saying she is actually politicizing this moment. And as far as my reaction to that Trish Reagan clip, here's what I'll say. I personally, and this is based off of what I've seen from President Trump himself, do not have faith in President Trump when it comes to the coronavirus. And I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope I am wrong. I want the best possible least damaging outcome. But criticisms of the president's actions or inactions, his proposals, or just the, the mixed weird things that he says is not some deranged reaction. Right? We have the CDC and the World Health Organization saying what a massive deal this is, talking about how serious it is. You know, we look to other countries and we see how fast the numbers jumped from tens of cases to hundreds of cases to thousands of cases. But still, as recently as yesterday, we had Trump minimizing the situation, once again comparing it to the flu. But then when it serves him, he'll throw away the minimization effort and he'll use it as a reason for him needing to have the border wall made. Even though, according to reports, the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said Tuesday that he was unaware of any indication from his agency that physical barriers along America's borders would help halt the spread of coronavirus in the U.S. But I mean, back to the minimization, right? And there's a difference between calming people and misleading people. And interestingly enough, th this issue with minimizing the problem, calling it partisan politics, was something that was called out by Tucker Carlson last night. Meanwhile, if we're being honest, the other side has not been especially helpful either. People you trust, people you probably voted for, have spent weeks minimizing what is clearly a very serious problem. It's just partisan politics, they say. Calm down. In the end, this is just like the flu, and people die from that every year. Coronavirus will pass, and when it does, we will feel foolish for worrying about it. That's their position. No doubt these people have good intentions, as they say this, many of them anyway. They may not know any better. Maybe they're just not paying attention. Or maybe they believe they're serving some higher cause by shading reality. Nobody wants to be manipulated by a corrupt media establishment, and it is corrupt. And there's an election coming up. Best not to say anything that might help the other side. We, we get it. But they're wrong. The Chinese coronavirus is a major event. It will affect your life. And by the way, it's definitely not just the flu. Carlson then going on to note the difference in the fatality rate between the flu and the coronavirus. Also notably the much, much higher fatality rate once you're talking about people in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s. And I guess really, if there are final points that I can end on, one, how fucking dare the entire world be so insane that there is a situation where I'm agreeing with Tucker Carlson. Two, both minimization and encouraging a panic can be damaging. Three, criticisms of an administration that actually proposed cutting CDC funding, seemingly making some illogical choices, having a mixed message minimizing the situation, 
that makes sense. That's not automatically just the left with pitchforks. And I mean, hell, you would think you would care about it more if you were a Republican president. The fucking coronavirus has the highest fatality rates among the ages that vote more Republican than Democrat. And I mention that not because that should be the reason that you take it as serious as it is, but because Trump is a self-serving man, so I'm appealing to those ideals. And then of course, finally for, remember to keep washing those hands, you dirty, dirty bastards. Be alert, be concerned, be informed, uh, but still do not panic. And that is where I'm going to end today's show. Of course, uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, anything else I talked about today, but, oh, <clears throat> that's where this one ends. If you liked or appreciated this video, hit us with a like. If you're new here, definitely subscribe to make sure you don't miss these daily weekday videos. Also, if you're looking for more to watch, maybe you missed yesterday's show, it definitely got hit. Or you want to check out the latest podcast, you can click or tap right there to check either of those out. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you like it.